Welcome to HD Nation, Tech Feed Edition, your guide to the best in HD content, the best in home theater gear, no matter what your budget is. I'm Patrick Norton. Hey, and I'm Robert Heron. Robert's got a review of Vizio's M Series HD TVs. We got viewer questions, but first, we got a heads up on Blu ray bargains from Gabriel, aka at No Liberal Bull, at HD Nation, at Robert Heron, at Patrick Norton. Time to raid the Walmart bargain bin. Found these Blu rays for under eight bucks with Voodoo Copy. And look at that stack of titles, kids. Ice Age, Cloverfield, Castaway Drive, Underworld, Blazing Saddles, Born Identity, No Country for Old Men, love that movie. Red Dawn, not so much. Gran Torino, The Shawshank Redemption, Pulp Fiction, love that movie. Oh. Hugo, really love that music. Quantum of Solace, Batman Begins, Dr. Seuss's Horton Hears a Who. Blazing Saddles! That's a really good collection of titles. Just a good reminder, though, yeah. your local stores are sometimes your best sources of those low-cost Blu-ray bargains that are out there. It's funny, we also got a, Gizmodo uh, twigged us to this one, the 50 of the best mo movies ever are your Blu-ray plus digital deal of the day, and you click over to Amazon.com, and it is the Warner Brothers 50 film collection. Ignore the little two-star thing over here, because when it first came out, it was like 600, 500, or 600 bucks. Oh, holy cow. It's now 185 bucks. That's less than four bucks per film. Nice. And the list of titles is crazy. Grand Hotel, a magnificent movie from 1932, Mutiny on the Bounty, Wizard of Oz, Gone with the Wind, The Maltese Falcon, Casablanca, Treasure of the Sierra Madre, A Streetcar Named Desire, An American in Paris, Singing in the Rain, Gigi North by Northwest, Ben-Hur, How the West Was Won, Dr. Zhivago, Cool Hand, Luke, 2000, oh. Space Oddly, Bully. Bullet, Willy Wonka, I could go on and on. It's just an unbelievable list of movies. Lord Darkness, of the Rings trilogy. Full Metal Jacket, <laughs> Goodfellas, Unforgiven, The Bodyguard. There's a ton. Natural oh Born God. Killers, Director's Cut. Oh, oh my Harry goodness. Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, The Matrix, The Shawshank Redemption, The Dark Knight, The Departed. Love that flick. Inception. The Hangover, Sherlock Holmes. That's a lot of goodness for, for less than four bucks a disc. Yeah, for less than 200 bucks, you could have like a good week and a half without sleep watching <laughs> movies. There, there's a lot of good content. If you're looking yeah. to get your Blu-ray collection started, there you go. I think that would be a great start. And there's yeah. a lot of classics in there, too. So There was some question as to whether or not those were all releases from that distributor or not. But you know what? I don't Water? even care about that. Yeah, and who cares? All, yeah, exactly. The collection itself is just epic. Yeah, I mean, and just ignore the ultraviolet stuff because it sucks. Uh, no, you know what though? Ultraviolet's getting cooler in the sense that those codes now can be redeemed on your Voodoo account. So oh, don't no. throw the code away. Just by entering it, you can then have access to that HD stream via Voodoo. <laughs> Something to realize. So I tweeted that out, and Dwight, aka at Deal Will, responded at Patrick Dorton. So what do I do with these when they stop making Blu-ray players? <laughs> <laughs> Dwight, let me assure you, Blu-ray players will be available for an astonishingly long time. Case in point, look kids, Amazon, you can still buy VCRs, which are really best used for transferring your old VCA VHS tapes into digital format before the magnetic oxides fall off the tape or the tape just disintegrates. It's kind of funny. Uh, they even still make uh, DVD VCR combos. Uh, they also have one that's a, by the lake. They have a refurbished unit that actually will do HDMI output from either of those devices. Really? And, it, and it made it a little easier for one install I did. So if you want me to tell you what that particular unit is, I'll look that up, but don't, otherwise. Don't don't do that. If you buy a VCR, buy something to capture the video from the VCR onto your hard drive on your computer and digitize <laughs> it because those tapes are getting old. Yes, They're getting they are. long in the tooth. They are going to die. And if it's you know your mother's wedding or your high school graduation or the something awesome, get it off that tape and on to a disc somehow. Totally. But yeah. as far as Blu-ray players go, it'll be years before Blu-ray players stop yeah. showing up on store shelves. And if you take the time to rip it and code your Blu-ray movies now, you can enjoy them for many years to come. Or, coming up soon, I'm sure, will be the 4K H.265 versions of your favorite movies available for either download or streaming. So, we're going to have lots of good content for many years to come, but Blu-ray is going to be here for quite a while. For those of us, by the way, who are looking for a spectacular home theater experience, if you have all of the money, check out, or if you just wish you had all the money, uh, CNET's Crave does a really fun thing where they basically look at ridiculously over-the-top stuff. This being the $8 million speakers, home theaters fit for a king. We're looking at the Star Trek 
themed ships bridge the bridge home baby well it's kind of crazy because like this is a six million dollar home theater uh, I think you said this was yeah Jeremy Kipnis's yep. home theater this is a reference home theater where he basically tests all the products in the world the best of the best 2250 square foot two-story concert hall it, just the technical aspects of that room <laughs> and the power and how it's fed and how he deals with all of it is is as fascinating to me as the technology in the room itself and of course the completely over the top I don't even know what to describe this. <laughs> Quote, <laughs> this Star Wars fan spared no expense for the creation of the ultimate sci-fi home theater. That's beautiful looking. It looks like the set of Tron, I think, is what you pointed out earlier. It, it does a has a little bit of the Tron <laughs> aspect going to it, but you know what? If When the lights <laughs> dim, you're not going to have that blue glow going during the movie, of course. We so. hope. <laughs> In beautiful. any case, yeah, they've got that. Some speakers that cost almost as much as my house and more shiny stuff, uh, CNET's Crave, check it out. Totally. You have a review of this yeah, HDTV. I do, man. We're taking a look this week at the 55-inch version of Vizio's M55 1D-2, uh, A2R. That's the Razer LED Smart TV with theater 3D technology. Right now, it's priced at, get this, about 1,050 bucks on Amazon. That's about, 15, about $500 less than a similarly sized LG LA7400 that we showed you on episode 220. We'll get into some of what makes this, you know, $500 cheaper. But uh, as far as the particular M series goes from Vizio, we're talking sizes from 50 to 80 inches that include 1080p resolution, 240 hertz refresh rate technology. It's likely 120 hertz refresh rate with a scanning backlight system, if you're curious. Uh, four HDMI ports. Two USB ports for plugging in your storage devices. Wi-Fi is built in, and subjectively, I found it to be really good at picking up the local reception here in our challenging studio environment, at least. And right off the bat, I'm going to say my favorite thing about the TV is its design. Uh, a great thin bezel design with metallic trim and a minimalist stand design that helps keep you focused right on the frame itself and makes it really kind of stand out. It reminds me of the Samsung 8000 from I, a few years ago, literally right down to the tongue, which is hanging out the totally, side. Totally, the little the tab tongue. there. Thin bezel, uh, yeah. just uh, even thin depth-wise as well, but also because of the stand the way it is, it keeps the focus on the screen itself. Considering what a value it is price-wise compared to what Samsung introduced their thin bezel designs for a couple years ago, it's nice to see this finally hitting the price points that we are seeing it at. Uh, also, it comes with a fully backlit remote that nice. I am a fan of, actually, it's, except for the gloss black that's on there. That's uh, just something I'm not a big fan of on remotes, but having the entire face of it backlit is really nice for use in a dark room. Right. Except I did run into some reception issues. Effectively, you're pointing it at the corner of the screen if you're trying to get accurate reception out of the remote. Pretty minor, though, Ooh. overall. Uh, Vizio's brand new Internet Apps Plus system has all my favorites, including Netflix, Amazon Instant Video, Vudu, Hulu Plus, iHeartRadio, Pandora, app performance across the board was solid. I had no trouble streaming good-looking HD video from that, as well as the audio sources as well. I really like the revamped menu systems as well. However, the app icons, the graphics in particular, they looked a little low-res and fuzzy, and I was wondering if that was perhaps related to just improving menu performance. Maybe they had to down-res the graphics on screen in order to you know, make the menu as smooth and fluid as it was. Hmm. But it didn't translate. That did, did not affect whatsoever the performance of streaming video from the services overall. That was flawless. Now, for the 55-inch M series, the basic grayscale controls provided effective, very granular controls. You can check out the results for before and after on the grayscale calibration. It's not too far off in its movie mode, but after calibration, it dialed in quite nicely. Now, doing a color check, I basically, I compare how this TV represents a series of colors across the board to something, say, like the LA7400 from LG. This TV was a little bit worse in terms of its accuracy, but not too far off. Now, it's also, when you talk about just viewing exams for regular movies, you're going to find some little bit of flashlighting artifacts with its edge-lit backlighting system. Now, that means basically you're going to get little glowing artifacts at the edges of the screen. It was really only noticeable when you're looking at letterboxed movies in a dark room. Outside of those scenarios, you're probably not going to even notice that as an artifact. Uh, overall uniformity was pretty good. Now, as a 3D TV, eight pairs of glasses in the box. That's pretty nice. We're talking passive technology. So they're not only lightweight, but they're also the lenses tend to be a little bit bigger than you'll find on your active lenses as well. Not bad at all. How was the 3D with the passive glasses? You know, I find I'm coming around to passive tech and I really like it a lot. At close distances, less than six feet, you're gonna get a lot of crosstalk where you're seeing the wrong thing in the wrong eye. But if you stay eight feet back and further, the sweet spot for 3D viewing was pretty wide. Movies like Hugo looked great overall. 
But the 3D picture setup, if I could point out one thing, it forced video smoothing on for detail enhancement, and I didn't see, I didn't see any way to turn it off. Now, uh, perhaps we're better off seeing it without it being turned off. Maybe the detail would really go to hell, but in this case, it was kind of odd that I could turn off video smoothing for every other thing where I didn't want it, the, the, you know, like, a, uh, like a camcorder effect in terms mm -hmm. of smoothing, uh, but not for 3D. Now, for 2D movies, like, say, I looked at The Dark Knight and Samsara, detailed treats. Uh, some scenes in Samsara appeared slightly off color-wise, but overall, it was a pleasing and detailed experience. Is that an issue with the calibration from the factory or an issue with the actual television itself? Yeah, uh, calibration from the factory. The grayscale, you can dial in quite well, but mm -hmm. in terms of being able to manipulate color, that was one of the things you're not going to be able to do with this set. There is no CMS or color management system. Got it. So you're, you're kind of stuck with the way it is. Maybe in the hidden service menus, there'd be a way to correct that further, but I didn't go into that. I was looking at only the user controls that were available. Okay. Now, one other thing I love about this TV is that overscan. The ability to show you every picture or every pixel in the video picture, it's off by default. And I just, that's just something that should be on every TV nowadays. Gamers, you're going to find the M-Series drops. When you switch into game mode on the TV, the AV delay, in terms of when the video goes in to when it appears on the screen, it goes from about 142 milliseconds down to 38. That's wow. a pretty low number and almost as good as some of the best projectors out there. Uh, video processing tests look good overall. It breezed through my HQV benchmark disk. And I, I gotta say overall, I, I really love what Vizio is doing with their modern uh, frame design on the new M series. It puts uh, the most screen possible into the smallest space. And it's really a 3D party in the box that also proved a decent 2D performer, even though it's color accuracy lagged behind some sets that cost up to 50% more. And I really wanna say for a thousand bucks at a 55 inch 3D screen, I'm gonna give it a thumbs up. I am really curious to see how this would compare to something say like Sharps. Uh, 2D LED in, say, a 60-inch size. It's right. a little bit more expensive, but the screen is a little bit bigger. But I'm, I'd be curious to go A, B to see who's doing better color out of the box. And that's the big thing here. For a few hundred dollars more, you're going to get the color calibration tools to actually make this look as spectacular as it should. Yeah, maybe a slightly better factory calibration mm -hmm. and some other. Like LGN also includes that picture wizard function where it's right. got some built-in calibration tools as well. That's what they're sacrificing here, but you're still getting all your app support, solid app support. I really like the redesigned menu systems as well. And, and things like Wi-Fi and file support are all there. So as an integrated networking TV, it, it's right on. And I Again, I gotta say, it's the design of the set overall that impresses me probably the most. It looks good. So, a great deal for $1,000, yeah. not the best overall picture. You're gonna spend a few hundred more for that. Totally. If, you're, if that's your primary requi or requisite for a new TV, then you probably wanna check up maybe on, their, on the step up model for this or, or another brand. But otherwise, I, I'm just impressed with what they're doing for 1000 bucks now, nowadays. It's amazing what they're doing for 1000 bucks. Beautiful. Changing gears a bit, let's talk about set-top boxes. Right now, my personal favorite, the Roku 3, in no small part because of the headphone jack built in the remote control. Um, th it is, it is, this seems really simple and kind of silly, uh, but it's basically it's a, a wireless RF-based remote control. It has the ability to pass through audio into, you know, they include the little earbuds in the box. I use a decent set of headphones. I love it that. It sounds fantastic, and the new interface from Roku, which is now available not just on the Roku 3, but on all the Roku products, uh, is fantastic. It's really good stuff. About the only way I'd walk away from the Roku 3 right now is if you have a whole bunch of money tied up in iTunes video, in which case your only choice is pretty much the Apple TV. It's 100 bucks, 1080p output, uh, and it's actually it's solid. It's good, and it's been it's been kind of funny because I've been playing around with a 720p Apple TV, a 1080p Apple TV, and the Roku 3. And I gotta say, the Roku 3, like Amazon Prime, looks fantastic on the Roku 3. Uh, um, it is it is really good looking video. Netflix looks really, really good, but a lot of the Amazon Prime stuff looks fantastic. But if you're an Apple product TV. user though, there's nothing easier than having that Apple TV device and then every device you have, you can yeah. send that video right or mirror it right to the TV with one <laughs> click and that's pretty fantastic and simple yeah. to use too. And it's kind of funny. You might be thinking, well, what about the Netflix playback in my Blu-ray player? I gotta say, right now my Blu-ray player is almost two and a half years old and it's like watching grass grow. And that's Should just brought the PS3. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> There's a no console rule in my house. Oh, yeah. I haven't quite gotten around that yet. Embedded appliances do not always age well, nah. PS3 aside. Uh, and look, we're also cool with rolling your own XBMC or Plex box, which brings us to Boxy. Uh, the XBMC variant was bought by Samsung last week. Boxy users will still be able to use Boxy, though the tiny group of beta users that had access to Boxy's DVR beta will lose access on July 10th. 
Now, it's kind of odd because Samsung already has a huge investment in its own apps and ecosystem. It's built on Linux like pretty much everything else these days. Rob, why did Samsung suddenly drop $30 million on a company that makes something Samsung already kind of makes itself. Totally. Now, I looked at this article this morning from nscreenmedia.com, and the article points out that the old boxy DVR's quality was dependent on the user's upload speed. And if Samsung takes this service to the cloud, it could then provide a full HD viewing experience. Also, it's in Samsung's interest to keep the remote in the user's hands, their remote specifically for that TV. Your cable and satellite remote doesn't access the fancy integrated apps, and Boxy's ability to blend the live TV streams, apps, and the recorded content may be the means to Samsung's short-term goals in terms of you know, bringing it all into one and getting you to hold on to that remote so that you're going into Samsung's app engine and staying in their world more than you are <laughs> jumping back to your cable or satellite set-top box. So it's kind of funny, right? We think we look at an HDTV, we think selling the HDTV is the primary source of revenue. No. What this is saying is <laughs> Samsung wants the advertising revenue from the apps built into the HDTV. Without a doubt, because that's going to be the biggest revenue stream for most Really? Sets. Except for some of those fancy upper mm -hmm. premium end TVs we were showing earlier in the show, those TVs will get right. you know a nice bit of profit attached to them. Most TVs though are just barely catching any profit your, at all. Your, your twenty thousand dollar four K HD TV, your fifteen thousand dollar projector, those are going to be nicely profitable. But there's no profit in an HD TV. Very little. Very little. Unless you're doing all of the work and then you're maybe getting a percent or two, if you're lucky. If you're lucky. And I won't even get into how many companies are out there making TVs who've been losing money hand over fist for years now. <laughs> so, oh. Oh, Stay wow. in business, folks. I love the pixels. Before we go, we got a couple of questions. Kenneth writes in, some TV and cable channels are in 720p while others are in 1080i. I have a TiVo. It can send the signal to my TV in the native resolution 720p or 1080i or all channels in 1080i. Do you recommend I watch the channel in the native resolution or upscale from 720p to 1080i, says Kenneth in San Mateo, California. A quick answer, 1080i for the most part. If you leave it in that native mode, it, it gives you full quality in a sense that you're seeing, you're getting pure output to the display device with each format. However, the TV is going to take more time switching between those formats, especially if channel A is in 720p, channel B is in 1080i, there's going to be an extra second or two just for it to reformat and get the display up. That's annoying, and the one way to get around that is just to let, let the box turn everything into 1080i and feed it to the TV. Also, if you're using a 1080p screen, that 1080i signal is going to give you the best looking picture. And especially, you don't want to be downgrading 1080i signals to 720p and then sending them to the TV, which is then going to take that back up to 1080p. <laughs> That's a mess, and you're losing yeah. detail every step you do there. So generally speaking, you just want to leave it in 1080i. Unless, unless you've got an epic yeah. video processor that's really quick on the fly, like a DVDO Edge or something like that. When I do that, 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 that video processor is so quick, I don't notice the changes. Uh, yeah. But when I do let the TV handle that, it, it just slows down my channel surfing speed, and that's unacceptable. I, I hate to say this, but I almost feel like there's a TiVo trap where people have invested in the lifetime subscription, or they just enjoy TiVo so much, and they hang on to older 720p or 1080i devices. TiVo hardware generally, though, is really good about the scaling and switching. So if anything's going to do the right. conversion, I'm comfortable saying let the TiVo do it, especially their, their THX certified boxes are awesome. And I think that, that certification on their premium boxes has trickled down and shown them how to do it really well on the rest of their products as well. So. If there's one box out there I'll let do the conversion, it would be that box. I am stepping back and acknowledging the superiority of the TiVo for conversion. Yes. One last <laughs> one before we go. Andrew, a.k.a. at MrAndrew22H, tweets at Patrick Norton at HD Nation. How can I view a sample of 4K TV? There aren't any in the shops yet. With HDTV of HFR, I could view a computer file. So HFR would be like The Hobbit, 48 frames per second, oh, the idea okay. of the, the, the high frame rate. Um, I feel your pain, but dude, you're either going to wait or or you're going to travel because no 4K screen means no 4K experience. But to give you an idea, if you've seen one of the high-resolution Apple laptops or oh. or one of the sort of you know um, Retina screens, that's kind of like what 4K is like with 4K content. It is like 1080p, but a little bit richer and a little bit denser because there's a four times as many pixels breaking the image up. And are there any shops out there doing projector setups where you could look at a 10-foot wide picture at 4K right. and a 10-foot wide picture at, at 1080p? Then you'd really start to see some differences. It would yeah. just be pretty amazing. Uh, the bigger the screen, uh, even for 1080p, you want a 6-foot wide screen, honestly. Right. To see all the detail that's there, you start shrinking the screen down at 1080p resolution, and it, it becomes harder and harder to see the detail that's actually there. It's uh, Pixels get too tiny. Now so. I'm dreaming of a 4K 
freaking projector in my yes, house, yes. which would have nothing to feed it. Let's get a few in for review. Oh, we should mention one last thing before we go. Uh, if you're outside the United States, you might want to hold off if you were thinking about ordering Sony's uh, FMP X1 4K media player. Good the call. folks at hdtest.co.uk say it ain't going to be functioning outside of the United States. Yeah, they had confirmation from one of the reps from Sony Home Entertainment, and yeah. uh, that's... That's interesting. <laughs> so I think they're going to use us as the test market, pretty much. Get the bugs worked out before they unleash it on the rest of the world. At least, at least that's what I'm hoping. That's the, be the best spin I can put on it for Sony, at least. Well, at least in the United States, see if they can pirate the 4K video out of the box. And if they don't, then we'll release it to the rest of the world. Hackers, get ready. Oh, my goodness. That's it for this edition of HD Nation Tech Feed Edition. Do us a favor. If you haven't been there yet, go to this page, revision3.com slash HD Nation. That's where you find all of our shows. You can find the ability to subscribe, download in our HD format. Yes, it's 720p. No, we're not going to get 1080p anytime soon. I'm really, really, really sorry. Well, 4K. Yeah. Well, and, well, it's... No. <laughs> Oh, poor Why are we losing money on <laughs> HD Nation? Because they're shipping it in 4K. <laughs> we got two gig downloads. Files. Yes. Yeah, that would be bad. But uh, the RSS feed, you're looking forward to subscribe or download the video box. You can find them right there, and that'll give you all of our available uh, video feeds that you can, well, put your favorite podcatcher and get delivered to your face. Of course, we're on YouTube.com slash tech feed. You can subscribe to us there, and we are on the Twitter. Yeah, and email us, too. Any comments, questions, or suggestions, always you can hit us up at hdnation at revision3.com. And until next time, thank you for watching.